Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. It is February the 17th, and I love the number 17 because to me, to me, <laughs> 17 means consecration because I think of John 17, 17, where Jesus says to the Father, consecrate them in truth, and your word is truth. That is absolutely phenomenal. If that does not get you super excited to where you feel like running up and down, maybe not your street because it's too cold, but running around your apartment. I mean, that should really strengthen you. Amen. And so one of the things that we're going to look at today is information, information, and the importance of information. And right now, we're getting a lot of information right now. This is known as the information age, right? And I put up a post about that, that this age is called the information age. Whereas before, we've had the industrial revolution. We've had a technology revolution. But because of technology, this day has evolved into information because technology creates databases to store what? Information. One of the things that I'm really going to get into in my group coaching call for those of y'all who are registered, and I'll send it out today, is about the information age and the importance of information and what it does to our mind and what that means because a lot of people do not understand what it truly, 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 truly is going on. And you know, yesterday, I just thank the Lord Jesus Christ that Rich was home because of weather. And we're still keeping in prayer all of those that are in the midst of this winter storm. And you know, one of the things I was reminded of, and again, we'll look at the information age you know, God was telling me, and I posted it yesterday, as it relates to Jesus being asleep on the boat. Let me pull up the scripture. And in the midst of the storm, of the disciple storm, Jesus was on the boat. And Jesus was asleep. And the disciples were anxious. They were restless. They were worried. And so they woke Jesus Christ up and Jesus rebuked the storm. I think this is it. Hold on. No. Hold on one second. I'm still looking at my memories. <laughs> and so I'm getting there. Okay, here it is. Mark 4, 37 through 40. And I find it interesting because that is after the parables of the sower of word. It is also after the parable of the light that's brought into a room, a dark room. It's the parable of the standing grain harvest. And immediately after the parable of the standing grain harvest, you have, you have this parable of Jesus, not a parable. You have the actual event of Jesus being asleep on the boat. Hey, Brandy, God bless you. Hey, everybody else. Thank you for joining in. And so, you know, that's what God brought to me yesterday. He brought to me about you know, in the midst of the disciples storm, in the midst of that storm that Jesus was asleep on the boat. He was at peace. He was at rest because he knew the father was in control. God has given us authority in our personal storms, whether they be real, whether they be, you know, in the invisible realm, spiritually, emotionally, phys physically, uh, mentally, right? Hey, Katie, I love you. And so right now, I just want to encourage you because yesterday, as I mentioned, when Rich was off because of weather and we just got to spend time relaxing, watching movies, having conversations, talking about the word, talking about the day, <laughs> and and I'll be teaching on it more on Facebook Live on Thursday or Friday, you know, all I could think about was the flood of information in today's world. And so one of the things that I'm teaching and have taught on in the book Mindfulness and in our group coaching series is about entropy. And entropy for physics is disorder. Entropy for information theory is randomness and uncertainty. So Entropy is the measurement of randomness and uncertainty. It measures the white noise. In order to compress it, it is that which is not of any good works, that which is of unavailable energy. 
that which is not efficiently at work. That is what entropy is. It measures that. And what is interesting is that there was a physicist, I think he was in the late 1800s or early 1900s. It was long ago, okay? And his name was Maxwell, and he had a theory about entropy, and it was called Maxwell's Demon. Hey, Vern, God bless you, Pastor. It was called Maxwell's Demon, and entropy, again, is disorder. It's chaos. It's randomness. It's uncertainty, and physicists have said that as time increases, entropy will increase, that entropy is not going to get less, that there's going to be more disorder, there's going to be more randomness, there's going to be more uncertainty, and it proves this in Scripture, and I'll get to that in just a minute. And this is what Rich and I had church over last night as we really talked, as God brought it to my heart to talk about the book of Daniel, and I'm going to get to that. But what yesterday was, was just a breath of fresh air. It was a moment for me to be in the Father's rest and to know His peace. And that with all things in God, there is certainty. That there is confidence. That there is absoluteness. Amen. And so with the information age, it causes us, if we're not in the rest of God, it causes us to be anxious. It causes us to have all kinds of fears within and fears without. And we have to guard against this. And so let me read. I want to read Daniel 12. And I really want to point to that. Because God keeps telling me that there is a lot of not only misinformation, right? There's a lot of misinformation today. Hey, Kathleen, God bless you. There's not only a lot of misinformation, but there's just a lot of information. And as I was mentioning the physicist Maxwell and Maxwell's demon, he kind of proved that entropy could be decreased. Disorder could be decreased. Uncertainty could be decreased. And he had his own theory where a demon was at a door. And this was a physicist theory, okay? A demon was at a door and there was many molecules of chaos on one side and a little molecules of chaos on the other side. And so the demon would stand at the door and open it, and then one molecule by one would go over, and all the molecules would be in that space on the other side. And so technically, to the physicists, entropy had decreased. But what technology scientists found, computer scientists, discovered, and they, they pretty much disproved his theory that it doesn't work because what they said was information in the mind of the demon in his example would create entropy. Now, just think about this because this is potent. Oh my gosh. This is potent because as we get more knowledge, as we get more knowledge in this present age, not knowledge of the world, I'm, I, I'm just dis, dis, uh, counting that knowledge of the word brings chaos. It doesn't. Knowledge of the word brings order. What I'm talking about is, is the knowledge of the tree of good and evil and that we are obtaining knowledge in some areas that it is unfruitful. Like, okay, let me just, let me just go there. Okay. The flat earth theory. Okay. Who does that benefit? <laughs> Who does, what does that do to help you to know whether the earth is round or whether the earth is flat? Uh, all these other theories, all these conspiracies, all this information that is flooding us for us to know about every news topic, which most news topics are negative. I mean, it's just too much information. And some of that information is just not beneficial. It's not conducive to our well-being. Amen. So in Daniel 12, 3, and this is what I talked about with Rich last night, and this is what I had church with, is it says, and I want to start in verse 3. I want to start in verse 3 because I truly believe that we are living in this age 
where the teachers that win many to righteousness shall shine like the stars. Amen, Kathleen. I, I believe that with you, sister. I'm so on board. It is too much information. It's over information overload. And this is on my heart because let me just get into this term just so you know. And I talk about this more in the book. And I don't want to get into all of that today because I am going to be sharing it later in group coaching. And I just want to... I just want to put this nugget out there for you. Information means facts provided or learned about something or someone. Okay, so you would think, okay, that's no big deal. Facts provided to learn. Facts provided to learn. Okay, facts provided to learn about something or someone. But this is what really blew my mind because the word information comes from the Latin word informer. And then evolved into informatio. And it means, are you ready? Formation of the mind. Formation of the mind. So information means forming the mind. And saints of God, you do not realize that when you're taking in information, you're learning. You're learning. And Jesus said clearly in Mark 4, 21 through 24, you know, be careful what you give your ear to. Be careful what you study. Basically, be careful about the information you are taking in. And he has really reproved me on this issue because it is not beneficial. Think about the information that came to Adam and Eve once they ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Think about the information they were flooded with that was added to their person because they gained knowledge of things that were not fruitful. It's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's the tree of information. Okay, and you've got to determine what information you're going to allow in your members. So get this. This is what's so important. It's the formation of the mind. So in Daniel 12, let's start in verse 3, Scripture says, And the teachers and those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness, to uprightness and right standing with God, they shall give forth light like the stars forever and ever. Oh my goodness, does that not totally amaze you? Because in the new teaching that I'm doing today, and in my book, God really has me go into the parables of Jesus Christ and I am telling you, it shows information theory. And light represents truth. Light represents truth. And so many people I've said for years, many, many years, I've said, because God would put it on my heart to say it, because people would say, oh, Robin, I need discernment. Pray for the gift of discerning of spirits. That gift is for something specific. It is to discern the spirit at operation, which is a demonic spirit in your midst. And it comes according to the need. But God would tell me all the time to tell people his word, his word, his scriptures, our discernment. And now he unpacks it and he gives it to his people and he shows us to the measure of truth that you walk in is the measure of discernment you have of life in Christ, the light of who Christ is. And so in Daniel 12, 3, it says that there will be this group of people and they will shine like the stars. They will have information that is fruitful and they will win many to righteousness, to right standing with God because the information they have is of truth. It is beneficial. The information that they give out Adds, and it gives life to people. It doesn't just suck the life out of them. And one of the things I noticed yesterday, it was so pro, it was so pronounced, was that yesterday, I just felt like if I got any information for which I did not have grace, that it was just sucking the life out of me. It was just sucking joy, peace. And I had to super guard my heart because it was irritating to me. It was disturbing my peace. And that's why I'm very careful to what messages I open up. And I don't, I try not to open up messages in the morning when I wake up. 
I usually get on and I used to check my messages about 3-ish a.m., about 4 th something a.m. It just counts on when I get up. And it would just really put me in a, a bad space in my uh, state to where that information that I just read was not beneficial and the knowledge of having that information was unfruitful. And so God just kept having me guard my peace. And so we're talking about an age that is the information age. What information are you taking in? Is it beneficial? Is it life-giving? Is it fruitful? Amen. So Daniel 12, 3, And the teachers and those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness, to uprightness and right standing with God, shall give forth light and the star, and be like the stars forever and ever and ever. In other words, their speech, their actions would add the life of Christ. Jesus, John 1, 4, in him was life. And that life is the light of men. John 1, 5, and the light pierces the darkness. And then it says in verse 4, But you, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. This is Daniel 12. Until the time of the end. Then many shall... Amen, Kathleen. I am totally agreement with you, sister. But you, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. And now watch this. Then many shall run to and fro and search anxiously... And knowledge shall be increased and become great. Now, I know the Amplified unpacks this, and they think that it is all about the Word of God, that many are going to search anxiously in the Word of God. But remember, God's Word is literal. And we should be hungry and thirsty for righteousness. And when we are desperate for God, we're not anxious. We're desperate. There's a difference. Amen. And so... Every once in a while, I don't totally reconcile with the Amplified, maybe three verses. I've only had an issue with three verses in the Amplified, Amplified Classic, which is huge. Because I usually have issue with some scripture and the interpretation of it when I get to the Greek or to the Hebrew or to the Aramaic, which is common in the book of Daniel, the Aramaic. And so when Holy Spirit just brought Daniel 12, 4 to me, I saw this as in the time of the end, many shall run and search anxiously. Amen, Vern. I like the Amplified too, brother. Many shall search anxiously and knowledge shall be increased and become great. And I think about this word and what it means, and I know the Hebrew, and I'm not going to get into the Hebrew context because it's bringing it to you and what the word actually means, knowledge, information. But we'll go ahead and we'll look at Daniel 12, 3. I didn't know this was going to be so lengthy, but I just want to bring you this Hebrew word, and I want to also read you Daniel 12, 4. Daniel 12, 4 in the King James says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. That is what the King James Version says. Knowledge shall be increased. It doesn't say that many shall run to and fro, and the unpacking of the Bible and the revelation of truth shall be increased. Because you have to take this in three contexts. The Word of God is in three contexts. It's literal first. Amen. Prophecy, especially literal. And it's also figuratively. And it's also in personal application. Okay. Literal, figurat figuratively, and personal application. So first and foremost, it's always literal. Okay. And so when I look at this as literal, and I see Daniel 12, 4, what I am seeing is in the end of days. People shall run to and fro, that there's going to be entropy. There's going to be an increase of anxiety, of movement, okay? And that knowledge shall increase. And this word knowledge is da'ath, and it means knowledge, it means cunning, cunning, it means knowledge, being aware. This comes from yada. And yada actually means uh, seeing. It means aware. 
It means certainty. It means comprehend. And so as I see this, I see that knowledge, it doesn't say knowledge of the word, even though knowledge of the word does increase because there's more of the light of truth in the Christians that are growing and increasing in this nation because of the number of Christians, amen. But literally, in the information age and technology, there is more information, more knowledge just coming to us left and right. And what I see God saying is, look, be cognizant that at the end of the age, which I truly believe we are in that age, however long this age is, whether it's two years, whether it's a hundred years, whether it's 300 years, whether it's a thousand years, I have no clue. I'm not Jesus Christ. I am not God. I am not Holy Spirit. And only the Father knows the time of Jesus' return. Amen. And we are just to be about the Father's business. We are to be giving life. We are to be giving the light of Christ. And so what I see in Daniel 12, 3 is a warning. And it's warning us, listen, there is going to be an age. And in this age, just as Eve and Adam ate of the fruit and they gained knowledge of the, the tree of the knowledge of good and calamity, guess what's going to happen to us? That we... If we are not guarding our heart and mind, that we are going to be tempted by that fruit of the knowledge of good and calamity, good and evil. And so, saints, I just want to encourage you, like Jesus said in Mark 4, 21 through 24, be mindful, be careful, heed what you're hearing, because whatever information you're hearing Whatever information you're trying to study, trying to learn, it's going to be added unto you. And so, in the future, you will find out how that information within the members of your body can just keep you in a constant state of fear and trauma. And so, saints, I just pray that you have wisdom from above of the Father you walk in that John 14, 27, undisturbed peace of Jesus Christ, and you just guard your heart and mind so that the information you have is like the stars that shine their light, and they shine where? In darkness, in order to bring that light, that certainty of hope of Christ Jesus to a time and age of darkness, of great darkness, so that many will know the righteousness of Jesus Christ and be reconciled to the Father. God bless you. I love you.